Hey good people, Batavia here. We're in the backyard garden and we're going to do a morning garden walk. See you in a few. Okie doke, so quick housekeeping items. Thank you to those who like, watch, comment, share, and subscribe to Be Better Garden. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. And if you do, hit the notification bell so you're alerted each time I share more hashtag garden joy. Alright, so we're going to take our walk through the garden. The intent is to see what's struggling, what I need to kind of try to manage, what needs to be harvested, and just check the overall health of the garden. So we're going to dig in. Okay, so you're witnessing the beginning of the garden completely going wild and getting away from me. And that probably was like a month ago. So you're in the middle of the garden completely going wild <laughs> and getting away from me. This is kind of my fall section. Um, I did plant this squash, this early scallop squash, uh, back here maybe in July, I guess. Um, and it's finally putting on some veggies. So one squash there. I direct sowed some chard, I think. We'll for sure see what it actually starts putting on true leaves. These are carrots that I did way back in June and they had been under lights inside and so I brought them out because they're going to do what they're going to do. We're going to give them some sun and uh, the goal here is just making sure that the containers are basically watered. Planted some lettuce here, more beets there. These are beets that look really good that I uh, direct sow back in the end of June. Um, I actually transplanted these out from this, I have a smaller container right at the top of the deck. My lettuce here. This whole section is just keeping a, an eye on it and then making sure that I get the containers watered. And the same thing goes for the wall of buckets I have over here. So sometimes I'll notice some wilting and I'll come in, but I try to water these like every day or every other day. Um, and I try to use a watering can so I have an idea of how much water I'm putting into the buckets. Um, I have been keeping an eye on this squash is the same early scallop um, because we have been attacked by squash vine borers with every other squash plant. So there is one squash down there. And I think this is just cool. I just love volunteers. So all of these are volunteers. Um, mustards from last year because I just planted them this year. And then the kale, the Russian kale, when I was drying the seeds to save them, I had the container that I was drying the seeds in over there. So clearly some of them fail and uh, basically made a home for themselves. But we have um, really some mustards and turnips and then I bought some cabbage transplants. I'm not sure if I'll have enough time for those to get to like complete maturity but we're giving it a shot. They were on clearance. And then my rutabagas. Uh, so now these are just waiting until I get ready to eat them basically. Um, so they're the size they're going to get. Um, they're ready to be harvested. I am going to come back around on a day where there is overcast and harvest out of the, the collard green bed. And then I have some onions in there too I want to pull. So every day I'm just kind of making sure that there isn't any damage on the leaves, like any prominent damage. Um, things like this I'll tape up. Uh, you can see I've used this tape here because remember this fabric is uber delicate. Keep an eye on the corn looking for grasshoppers. You see there I don't want to get too close. Uh, but then just seeing how it's going to do and making sure I keep it watered. I pull the cucumbers and sunflowers here. I'm just looking for the couple of okra pods that I'm going to get off of these plants. You can see the difference. You know, the okra plants normally for me get a lot larger. And then this poor tomato plant, it's produced. It was the first tomato plant that I had tomatoes off of this year. And our um, green zebra, it's produced much smaller uh, tomatoes but it's giving me food so we will continue to support it we pulled our potatoes there's a, a youtube short where we kind of show you what that looked like from this bed we have corn that i already had my first ear of corn for the season and so we have a couple more that are getting close like this one's getting close with the brown uh, let's see um I'm not kind of doing much here. So I kind of keep an eye, make sure that there's not a whole bunch of yellowing. I'm just, I'm blanching these at this point and I want to make sure that um, at least I pull these celery stalks off. I don't know what's going to happen with the celery that's in that bed given how it's been overshadowed, but I think I'm going to get some good celery out of there. 
so for here this is all about just keeping things watered my herbs that I did just such a poor job at this year uh, these peppers I was trying out I did direct sow some lettuce here that's germinated so I'm keeping a closer eye on making sure that those plants get water like every couple of days uh, this is the third kohlrabi plant that I just put out here um, we'll see if it's attacked I'm hoping that it stays healthy and attacked by like the cabbage moth or some other insects um, this is just some direct sowed uh, kale mix I want to get some leafy greens kind of quick turnaround and so they've already germinated they were planted the seeds were sowed like seven days ago or something um, potatoes were waiting to finish so not a whole lot that I do on the garden walk I just basically walk past them um, we have the long season uh, potatoes that we planted so we're giving them a little bit more time here I'm honestly more worried about the flowers than anything else the peppers look great um, they've been doing really well let's move this So yeah, they've been doing really well. We have some great size. We're just waiting for them to get to color. Um, so we have some of our bell peppers doing great back here. Um, so they look good. And again, we're just waiting for them to color up our sweet potatoes. We will come in and clean up some of these leaves that are yellow. But um, since this is a 20 gallon container, it takes a little less watering but we do want to make sure that it doesn't get dry. So then the cage baby. Let's take a look inside. So inside of the cage baby we have tomatoes and peppers and a few other ends and odds. The peppers look good. They're starting to get some color on them. Tomatoes are ripening. This is that plant, that Roma. It's a determinant and it has been sick a long time. And I teetered on pulling it because really I just didn't want it to get this plant sick. But it hasn't so far. Um, so I'm letting them ripen. You know, the vegetables ripen on the actual plant. So I'm going to come in and pull all of the red tomatoes off. And they're just a handful more of green tomatoes. And then we'll cut the plant out. Um, the other, I think this is the San Marzono. I'm not sure what I told you all last time, but my tag currently says San Marzono, and it has produced quite a few, quite a few um, tomatoes, which is super duper cool. They're just, let's see if we can get in there, huge clusters of tomatoes. They're smaller, um, but it's still, it's going to make some good eats. Uh, so I'm going to pull that cluster of red tomatoes off. Um, or drop them here <laughs> so um, I'm really pleased with this and then I want to get on the other side oh so it's probably rude I should introduce you to one of my many volunteers so we have um, a volunteer second or third year that tomato plants volunteered here oh my gosh this is the first time ever that I've seen the tomato hornworm collective no Oh my gosh. All right, so I'm going to come back in and look closely at this plant. Obviously pick that off because um, I know that they can really decimate a plant. Um, I mean, I think that's what that is, yeah? Yeah, it's ugly and freaky looking. Well, all right, so inside we have oregano that we just sowed. So nothing but keeping an eye and making sure that it hasn't dried out. Um, my peppers over here, the gypsy pepper is changing. So plant still looks good. This is the Amish paste that I had to cut basically the entire plant up. So I pruned from all the way down up. But look how huge those tomatoes are. That is wild. I don't know, you know, the size is great, but I don't know if this variety is just generally sickly. And I'll take a look at it over the fall and decide if I'm gonna plant or start this again next year. Um, we dug up the walkway here. So let's see if you can get a good look at it. Um, I pulled back the mulch and I tried to direct sow some kale here. So we'll see how it does. Uh, let's see, move on. So more oregano that's down there. Um, I know it's, the sun's come out. It's a terrible shot there. Um, peppers, banana peppers here. So for this, I'm just taking a quick peek to see if anything is ripening. But I do want to show off the size of these tomatoes. This is the pineapple tomato. Oh my gosh, that is huge. 
Um, so can't wait for that to start ripening. So the old German is there and it, I thought would change a couple of different colors, but it looks like it's gonna stay with orange, which is fine. And I did have to do a lot of pruning with that plant too. You can see how it has so very few leaves, you know, basically for the first three feet, um, almost four feet. So that may not be a contender for next year. We'll see how it tastes. Um, next up is the mm, mortgage lifter. So I'm not seeing two pound, three pound tomatoes, but you know, we hope that the tomatoes are enjoyable all the same. Um, we do have some that are turning here. Um, and then we have a couple at the bottom that have ripened. So the honeycomb has done well. Um, we are just looking for uber orange uh, tomatoes to pull those off. They are so good and sweet. Um, what we are calling the chef blend, which is putting on much larger tomatoes than we thought. The plant's doing fine. Um, it's not loaded down with tomatoes, but we'll take what the plant gives. I did buy some transplants for basil since my basil was bolting. So here are a couple of other cabbage starts. I can see in the background roly polies that are trying to attack. Because this bed also had basically all wood chips. So we pulled back a lot of the wood chips, but you can see which roly polies love kind of that um, wood and the dampness. And I'm also trying to keep this bed um, watered so it's the perfect conditions for them so we'll try to manage against that this is another volunteer and like so the garden walk goal here would be observe that this plant needs to be tied up <laughs> so it is going completely wild and um, the good thing though is that there are tomatoes there there are plenty of them so we'll take it can barely walk over here but that's okay one more volunteer and we have some nice size green zebras. So I really enjoy the green zebras and the garden gods have listened. So they're growing everywhere. All right, last bit. So we have three tomato plants in here and a couple of pepper plants. So that's bell pepper here that looks great. Uh, just keeping an eye on the health of the plant basically. Um, we'll wait for these two ripen. I do eat some green bell peppers, but I really enjoy them once they've gotten to whatever the color is they're supposed to get to. Um, and that actually I think is going to turn gold based on the tag. Same thing for this one. So my early girl is here and it has <laughs> a little late in the season, but it's put on tomatoes. They turn red. There's some of the earliest um, slicers to turn red so there is that I guess it is true to its name this was a transplant that I purchased the box car and I just like the only thing I do daily is like I'm just in shock by the size of these tomatoes. like look at let's see if you can get in there like that it's huge I do have like one that's right that's smaller back there but that's not the only big tomato on this plant I'm definitely saving seeds and I hope that it produces a boxcar. It's an heirloom variety. So, yeah. So the last plant is another green zebra. And this one, you like, when you give green zebra plants room, they clearly just take over. I have one in the front yard where it is just, it's ready to start going up to the porch and just, you know, like walking around up there. It's huge. I, um, but then I have some here, like this one split. So I'm going to take this one off and basically cut it in half, cut out this part um, and probably just add this to breakfast, the other half. And there's some more that are ripe here. But the plant's doing great and um, it's probably going to be one of my producers all the way up until the end of the season. Alrighty, so that is our morning garden walk for the backyard garden. I think that we walked through the things that I need to do, including tying up some veggies, harvesting a bunch of tomatoes, and we also need to track down tomato hornworms to see if there are any more back here. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate y'all spending some time with me. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, feel free to drop them below, and I shall see you all in the next one.